thank you, viewers. We're back with you again. The Church of Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. And uh, as we say, we normally share with you every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock here on CBC TV 8. Well, today we want to conclude a two part series we looked at. We started last week disaster preparedness, um, disaster planning. But today we want to zero in on developing a family plan um, for impending disaster, and um, among other things. But that's our focus. And again, we are so glad to have with us Andrea Grosner. Yes, sir. We enjoyed your yeah. interaction last week. Very informative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And look forward to a special session today as well. And of course, thank you, thank you. I have with me my co-host, um, Reverend Anderson Kelman. A very pleasant evening to you, viewers. All right, but I want to read a verse with, for you again. I'm reading this time from for sec, from Second Corinthians chapter four, and we're reading verses eight and nine. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed; perplexed, but not in despair. Mm -hmm. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Yes, conscious of our difficulties and our problems are, are presented. But as was said last week by Andrea, if we prepare ourselves, we can bounce back, we can be resilient. Let's pray. At this point, Father, again, we Thank you for this facility where we can share and discuss an important area such as this, disaster preparedness. I pray, God, that you will continue to enlighten us. We know that we depend on you for guidance and protection, but Lord, there are certain things that are critical that we have to do to put in place that when we face disasters and hazards that we're able to bounce back. We pray that we will apply wisdom even as we prepare ourselves mm -hmm. during these difficult times. Help us not to be complacent, but wise. As we work with a family or churches, or with governments, whatever we do, as a team, to be able to be resilient. So bless us as a nation. We pray, even though as we pray for St. Vincent as they recover and the Grandines as they recover, we thank you for the progress that was made. But we know that there's much more to be done. And we pray that you will continue to provide means as they bounce back from this volcanic eruption which they experience. Bless our program today. For Christ's sake, amen. Well, we shall be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Uh, welcome back to you. So good to be uh, with you again, and we have Andrew Grubiner, who will be with us this evening to, to, for our second segment in terms of uh, disaster preparedness. And uh, as I said to you before, uh, she is indeed uh, um, a trained uh, person in terms of disaster management. Um, she has her, a, a BA in geography and a master in business administration, so she is well equipped, and um, of course, she is certified in business continuity planning, as well as in monitoring and evaluation. And uh, Andrea is currently the acting deputy executive director of Sedima. Mm -hmm. And um, we, are, we are so grateful mm -hmm. for her wisdom. And she shared it very lavishly in our last program. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt she will share again with us um, this, this evening. So this evening we're focusing on, on the family mm -hmm. as we prepare, you know, in terms of of disaster to mitigate the hazards. 
So I'll do it over to you. And thanks again for coming Welcome. to our program. Welcome thanks. again. Yes. Thanks very much. Yeah. And again, it's, um, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. Sedima and having me on this program. It's really a privilege and a pleasure. There's a saying that if disaster management was a battlefield, the community will be the front line. And the community <laughs> is made up of families. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, if, you, if you're the front line, that means that you are the person that keeps these things at bay. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you are a stronger family, mm -hmm. if you have a stronger preparedness at the family level, it means that the community is empowered mm -hmm. to be able to deal with any hazard from which they will be impacted. Mm -hmm. In this discussion around the family as well too, the church is absolutely critical because whatever, wherever, however you look at the, the, the society in the Caribbean, faith and the Christian faith is very, very important to the majority of Caribbean people. Mm -hmm. And even in, East, even, even in this era where there are not number of people who may not be actively involved in church mm -hmm. or even uh, had um, be saved. Mm -hmm. The fact is, is that the the, the influence of the church, mm -hmm. as well as the potential mm -hmm. influence of the church, mm -hmm. is very, very, very great. Mm -hmm. And you will see that during times of crisis, mm -hmm. that people will call on whatever faith they have mm -hmm. right. <laughs> at that moment to get through that crisis. For answers. So, yeah. For answers, because they do not understand. That's right. So th th this, this, is a, this is very important, and the church needs to understand this role, mm -hmm. not only the active role that they're playing, mm -hmm. but the potential role that they can play in being able to support families and so on, and dealing with family preparedness. Now, the, the I, I will say that Individually, I would want to encourage families to have a conversation about the family preparedness. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for the family to have a discussion. Okay. First of all, you want to be able to understand the environment in which we live. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about the second most hazard mm -hmm. prone region in the world. So we know that there are things that are going to come to us from various directions mm -hmm. as it relates to the, the impacts. But we need to understand also the community in which we live. Is that specific community prone to floods? Mm -hmm. That's right. What mm -hmm. are the type of things that may be happening in the community that even if we may not be prone to, that may cause floods? Mm -hmm. Like um, littering, mm -hmm. um, things, how uh, whether drains are being cleaned. You know, Bar Barbadians tend to say, oh, but we would call the ministry to clean the drain. Mm -hmm. People, my encouragement to people is get together as a community and clean that drain. There's probably persons who are at the drainage unit who will not be affected when the water comes. It's your home and your community that will be affected. Mm -hmm. So you, I would say get together the community, mm -hmm. get the advice mm -hmm. and the guidance and participate mm -hmm. in cleaning the drains. I mean, and of course, Andre, I mean, truth is matters. There's so many drains to be cleaned that the drainage unit probably doesn't have Classically, all at the same time. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So do your part mm -hmm. to have those drains cleaned. So you need to understand the, the the particular community in which you live and what are the hazards that that community may be affected with, uh, by. Then there is your specific home. Mm -hmm. We know that people may not have the wherewithal to have a a home that may very well be strong enough to withstand maybe uh, a hurricane. Let's talk about hurricanes because we know at the we're at the the cusp of the hurricane season now right. and it is predicted to be an above average hurricane season again mm -hmm. in 2020 so uh, 2021 mm -hmm. it's not as high as 2020 was predicted mm -hmm. but it is still expected to be an above average hurricane season so perhaps you do not have a, a, a home that may very well be able to withstand a hurricane in terms of the, maybe the shape of your roof etc mm -hmm. but you can look at having a safe home a safe place within your home, a safe room within your home. Mm -hmm. And this is a room probably that has no windows. Mm -hmm. if, it is, if it is a room that has no windows, so that would probably be in the central central part of the home. But if there is a, it could be a room that has maybe only one window mm -hmm. and perhaps you can be able to put a shutter on that particular uh, room 
that you can ride the storm out in that specific room. So you have a strong door where it, it can open back out into the house. You be sure that that door is strong and you ensure that that window itself may have a, a, a shutter. Mm -hmm. For some people, because they're just trying to ride out the storm, it may be the bathroom because that's the bathroom with the smallest window. Mm -hmm. That's the place with the smallest window mm -hmm. and that's the place where they can be able to secure and to be able to ride out the storm because you want to be able to keep your family safe during that time. Now, the, 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 if you don't have a safe home, you have to plan how to go to a shelter. So you need to know what shelter you'll be going to, and you need to be able to inform family members that this is where I'll be going. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, if something happens during the storm mm -hmm. and your home is impacted, they would want to know where you are. Where you are. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to ensure that you do not cause a lot of panic mm -hmm. and so on. So you're looking at your, your, your physical surroundings, you know, where you're located, can my, my, my home withstand a hurricane? If it can, can I have a room that will be able to do so? How do I make it safe? Mm -hmm. If I can't make it safe, where do I go? Mm -hmm. And you want to do that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You do not want to wait to evacuate in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. If you have doubts, you can go to a, you, you, you can, you can either evacuate to a, another family member's house who has a, has, has a safe home, mm -hmm. Or you can go to a public shelter, and you should know the shelter, the the, the, air, the, the shelters that are in your specific area. Mm -hmm. Now, the, remember this is a discussion, so yes. we actually have a we actually have a little bit of a two pager from Sidima mm -hmm. that you can be able to have this conversation with your family mm -hmm. and to be able to fill it out. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can actually be able to use. So this can access on your website. Absolutely, and yeah. I, I have a, I have a I have a copy that the that the audience definitely um, can see. Yeah. Okay. And the the other things that you so this is a conversation. Mm -hmm. Just two pages, you have your conversation, and you actually can fill it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you go along. Mm -hmm. The other things that you want to be able to find out is your, a survival kit. So you want to be able to put together supplies for about three to five days. We normally say three days, but in our past experiences, sometimes the support that you may get in terms of rolling out to people who are affected may not happen until about five days. Mm -hmm. So three to five days. And in this, you would want to put, we know the things, your non-perishables, um, your non-perishables, just your canned items and foods, mm -hmm. things that are ready to eat, mm -hmm. including uh, snack bars, like granola bars or something like that, mm -hmm. bottles of water, you want to be able to have your your your, your medicines. You know, people maybe mm -hmm. have different types of medications. Mm -hmm. Important documents in a plastic container, mm -hmm. uh, plastic bag that mm -hmm. is is is, is um, can be sealed. You face first aid, radio because it's important to have communications. You want to understand what's happening on the outside mm -hmm. because you can't go there to see. Transistor so radio. transistor radio, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be able to have that. Your bedding, it could be a rolled sponge. It could be, uh, you know, some tar so t t something that can allow you to, to, to lie on. Your sanitary and hygiene items. Mm -hmm. Your, um, this is uh, your cream and your, your, your soap and, you know, a little bit of yeah. dead oil or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And your mask mm -hmm. and your hand sanitizers. Because oh, <laughs> this is COVID-19 yeah, times. Reality <laughs> this reality. is the reality. Different. Eh? This is the reality. And we, we, we sort of encourage that each person in the family should have a grab bag. A bag that can, you, that can give you your supplies for three to five days. Mm -hmm. And I often encourage for children, place their favorite toy in that particular grab bag. Something that is of comfort to them. Right. And for you, things that are also precious to you. If there's a precious photograph or something like that, you want to be able to carry it, but you also want to be able to have something there that you know that provides that comfort. Some comfort, some yeah. comfort to you. That's very- right. Anchors you. And anchors you, yeah. yeah? And anchors you. So you want to have that contact information so you want to have a plan a plan with your family if you are separated mm -hmm. how do we what, what do we do do we try to get to auntie's house grandma's house this person's house maybe in three to five days you know is this the place where we want to do is there uh well we know telecommunications may be done but you still want to be able to have the numbers in mm -hmm. case communications case. are still up mm -hmm. but you want to have that place where you know that if you are separated for any reason 
we know that this is where we are going to try to find each other at that particular time. You want to be able to ensure that your pets mm -hmm. are protected. You may have to re we you may have to release your, your pets because they will find safety and they will find shelter. Mm -hmm. So you may have to release them so that they are in a if you can't bring them into the house that they are in the position. Don't leave them tied. Yeah, you might want to also be able to place food for them that they may be able to have or store some, store store some so that they will be able to eat, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, you want to be able to ensure that you have the shut off valves for your electricity, your gas, you know where they are, you sort of practice how to deal with them and those type of things. And you want to be able to practice it as a family. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you get together and you say on this day, just for a few minutes, we practice ensuring that we can get our grab bags and that we're mm -hmm. able to, to leave, leave quickly, mm -hmm. that we're able to do all the things that you are, are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this is important for you to be able to understand you have your, your supplies, you take care of your home, you discuss it together as a family in how you are going to go about your family preparedness. Remember your insurance, mm -hmm. your important documents, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good information. Yes. Yes, um, and uh, uh, the whole issue of being able to have that that grab bike so yes. you can move the grab bike. if if, mm -hmm. if that, that that is necessitated, you know. Mm -hmm. So so thanks, Andrew, for your um, timely insight, and we will come back to you shortly and have uh, a bit of a of a conversation. Of course, so, thank you so yes. much. Mm -hmm. yes. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Welcome back, viewers, and uh, so good to have you with us again. Now, I want to give Andrea a chance to just kind of uh, share with us any other elements you would want to impart with reference to preparation, maybe from the word, um, <laughs> any examples of, of preparation for disaster? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the Bible provides an excellent model for preparation. And, uh, you know, the, the, when we look at the stories in the Bible, look at the story of Noah mm -hmm. and, and, and the flood, remember that he prepared mm -hmm. and his preparatory actions lasted a very long time right. because, the, and at that time, the flood was not expected. As a matter of fact, the uncertainty, we live in a realm mm -hmm. and in a world now where we talk about uncertainty with climate change, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. Based on my understanding of the Bible, what Noah was warning about, people had never yet seen. Mm -hmm. Water would, would come from the ground mm -hmm. and not from the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they were preparing for something that was not yet mm -hmm. seen. And when you hear the, the scientists talk about climate change, we talk about uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the, the volcanic eruption. We're saying we don't know how long the volcano will continue to erupt, that we have the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But yet, mm -hmm. God gave Noah the wisdom of mm -hmm. how to prepare for a flood. Mm -hmm. So it was a hazard. Mm -hmm. It was a disaster for the other people, yeah. but not for Noah and his family. Yeah. So this is an excellent, ex excellent mm -hmm. example of preparation. Mm -hmm. We also have Joseph and the famine. Mm -hmm. Joseph in a foreign land mm -hmm. and being able to help with the preparation for, for a famine that mm -hmm. even benefited mm -hmm. his people <laughs> at the time. It was seven so years of preparation. Seven years of preparation. Yeah. It, yes, so, so preparation can take a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't do it before, the next best time to do it is now. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it almost seems as though what, what she said, I've been saying to us, uh, Farley, is that we don't just have a social imperative, we also have a biblical imperative Absolutely. as well. To be fair, you know, and, um, and that gives us uh, twice the reasons. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, I suppose in the case of no, um, there's also might have said, you know, yeah, a foolish old man, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm sure you know? I did. I'm sure I said <laughs> because that. Because you're preparing for something that has, has not happened. Yeah. I mean, we have a hand. Uh, we've heard talk about a tsunami here. Mm -hmm. We have a hand that, you know, we, we've had a few occasions where there were, you practice the whole mm -hmm. idea of mm -hmm. suppose it were to happen. Yeah. Uh, especially on the West Coast and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, because it hasn't, mm -hmm. sometimes persons don't take it seriously. 
And I think that is that is that is the point. Mm -hmm. I mean, need to be wise as 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 Noah was, mm -hmm. as as Joseph was. Yes. Could you imagine seven years with mm -hmm. out? Absolutely. Before but, green. Yeah. Well, not just that, but I remember there was a there was a um, an activity a few years ago of evacuating Bridgetown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, persons complained bitterly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, what is forces for? You know, this time, time. I remember. You know, and mm -hmm. complain bitterly. You know, mm -hmm. not realizing that. Understanding how we're going to evacuate. If it were to happen, mm -hmm. if it yeah. were to happen, yeah. you can't save many lives, you know. Yeah. And so I really want to underscore that, though, mm -hmm. that we have to recognize that, you know, an answer prevention mm -hmm. is better than a point of cure, Absolutely. you know. And uh, at the family level, at the community mm -hmm. level, yeah. practice is is, yeah. is important in terms yeah. of what do we. I like when she said that respond. as a family, you should practice. Yes. Get grab bags and so on, yes. especially when you have children. Yes. yes. So that um, there is, you know where to go, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know how to hold it, you know, you know how to carry yourself, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. so on. I, I mean, maybe, maybe the plan could be way there, Andre. I mean, you can help me help me here, in terms of let us say the disaster occurs or the hazard occurs during the day, I mean, yeah. when you're separated, you know, you mm -hmm. you are worried through that school. That's very scary, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Your you family. Know, what 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 is our plan? I mean, of course, I, I'm sure the school will. Have some kind of plan for for for, for the children, mm -hmm. but how do we how do we access the children? Um, do we do we go to some location? Um, if you can't get the children, what what do we do? I think those are all things that we yeah. discuss, mm -hmm. and even maybe talk to our schools about mm -hmm. it as well. Because what is point, your plan? But the point is that what you're saying that sometimes you may not be able to get back together. Yeah. During the situation, if it's something that's sudden, right? Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we we have uh, facilities that we can. We can monitor and we can mm -hmm. give you notice mm -hmm. right. and so on. Mm -hmm. But life as it is, sometimes right. you can have sudden, sudden. Oh, who do you call? Who do you call in the event of a disaster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who should my my son call if you can't reach my or daddy? Who next should you call? Mm -hmm. um, is that person, um, you know, informed that you know should a disaster happen? Yeah. You know, your son is going to call whoever. Mm -hmm. You know, so we yeah. have a, a plan yeah. mm -hmm. to to remain connected mm -hmm. and also, of course. Um, you know, if, if worse comes to worse, then we also have a way of being able to, mm -hmm. to, to, to know what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I also remember you mentioning that there are some disasters that are man in juice. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about fire. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so on. Yes. Uh, if something like that were to happen, mm -hmm. families can separate as well. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. that's not something you, that was planned for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. These are all very important conversations because yeah. the reality is that sometimes there are things that will happen mm -hmm. when we are not together as a family. Exactly. That's right. So yes. that whole matter of the, the whole matter mm -hmm. of separation mm -hmm. and how do you are you able to come back together? Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, who to call, mm -hmm. where to go, yes, right. and and what is the time frame? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so we say you give you have to give yourself time. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if you said okay, maybe for some things it may be twenty four hours, yeah. but if there's major destruction, you probably have to give yourself seventy two hours, which yeah. is three days, mm -hmm. for that reconnection mm -hmm. to be I able to occur. That is even more serious. If there are children involved, that's right. Uh, uh, two yes. adults separating might be not be yes, as right. scary, course. but the children and then the ages of the children. Well, yes, of course. course. If they are at school, uh, right. Or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so you can't plan, get home. Right, your plan should include that as well, too. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. important because even the schools, in terms of their preparedness, this is something that we are working with as well, too. True. And their own preparedness. Just in case. I will tell you that there, there are two examples that I can draw. One, one, one is an example where there was a challenge, and one that where there was not. So for instance, they had a situation in Cuba where many children often often drowned um, um, as a result of some things, the spring tides coming in at mm -hmm. certain times of the year, mm -hmm. etc. They, they, they were caught. And they were home. And and, mm -hmm. and and they taught the children to swim. Okay. Interesting. So mm -hmm. as they taught the children to swim, they put on a, a program yeah. with the children swimming. Mm -hmm. And so as they taught the children to swim, mm -hmm. you found that the there was a decrease in in deaths. Yeah. So there was something specifically that they did mm -hmm. to address that that built the capacity of the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also have another example where there was um, I do not remember the name of the 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 the, the, um, the the earthquake and the tsunami that occurred, but this was in 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 South America. I think it might have been. I think it may have been. It was on the the western coast of South America. I don't remember the country, but here it was that you had 
the, the children was at a school mm -hmm. and when the earthquake occurred and they, 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 they knew the, the, the warning signs, mm -hmm. The, the school evacuated the children to higher ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now the road mm -hmm. towards the school was on the coast and many parents wow. mm -hmm. were trying to get to the school mm -hmm. to get the children, mm -hmm. the parents died. Wow. Because the tsunami came onto the road and yeah. swept the cars away. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. So there, there is also this conversation between the school mm -hmm. and the t and so we have to we have to also teach our children. Mm -hmm. I was saying in the Sunday schools when we teach about God and we talk about creation. We also do have to teach the story about the fact that this is a word that is constantly developing. Mm -hmm. And the, the volcanic hazards and earthquakes is part of the development. Mm -hmm. You know, plates coming together, cause fold mountains, the mm -hmm. beautiful, majestic things that we see and we love. Mm -hmm. These are all part of God's creation That's as true. well. It has a, um, a, a, a side that builds. But there's also that destructive part. Yeah. And what we need to be able to do is to teach in the Sunday schools as well, the children, how do we cope mm -hmm. with those things? How do we protect God's environment? By not littering, mm -hmm. by ensuring that drains are clean. How do we build that sense of community spirit? Yes. And how do we build that preparedness? Mm -hmm. Knowing that a part of our responsibility mm -hmm. is to be prepared because these hazards are not intended to destroy us. <laughs> and just thanks so much. You've yes. given us a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and we realized in terms of responsibility, taking care of our environment and preparing preparedness and so on. We want to thank you so much. And let me also pleasure. say thanks to Sadima as well thank for releasing you to us. Of yes. Um, we really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much. So, Andrew, we're going to, we know that you're a child of God. We're going to ask you to pray for us in closing. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so in awe of you and who you are and all you've done. And so, Father, we come before you and we ask, O oh Lord, that you will look over us as your creation. I pray, O oh God, that you will allow us to recognize that we have a responsibility, O oh Father, to you, to take care of our environment as we worship you as creator God. And Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will endow in us, O oh Father, a sense of responsibility, O oh Father, that we will take care of all that you have given to us, our families, our homes, our communities, our nation. And I pray, oh God, that you will give us wisdom as we face hazards in the day and as we move about our world that you have placed us in. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will help us to be prepared, that you will help us to have a resilience mindset, but Father, even as we may be impacted by various hazards and even as we may be prepared, we know that there are times, oh Father, that we will be adversely impacted. And this is the opportunity for us to recognize, oh Lord, that at the end of the day, it is not what we have or who we are, but who we have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So God, I pray, oh Lord, that you would order our steps. I pray, oh God, that you will help us as Sidima to serve this region to serve it well i pray that you will strengthen our connection oh father even with the churches and i pray oh god that for the christian community that you will strengthen their resolve oh father from the biblical imperative that they have to prepare their church their congregation their communities and their nation for any hazards that they may face we ask your blessings and your direction even now in jesus name amen Thank you again. You're Andrea. welcome. God bless you. Viewers, God bless you. Let's be prepared. <laughs>